Our next topic is schedule line category. In this topic, we'll just learn an overview about the schedule line category. And in the next video, we'll talk about the customizing and determination of the schedule line category. So the topics we're going to learn, they are what is the schedule line category, types of different schedule line categories, naming convention of the schedule line category and functions of a schedule line category. So you might have noticed in the previous video, I have shown you a couple of times the schedule line of a sales order. So the top screen that you can see here is from GUI and the bottom screen shot that you can see is from Fury app. So whether you see a schedule line of a sales of a sales order item from Fury app or whether you see from a GUI transaction, you will find a similar screen and here you can see a uh, schedule line category. So standard schedule line category is CP for sales orders. So let me show you a few of them first and then we'll talk in more details. So if I go to the system, let me let me open a quotation first. So if I go to VA22 and enter your quotation number, press enter. And when I go to the double click on the line item, go to the schedule lines, and here you can see this BN is the schedule line category there, which is automatically determined when you create the quotation. If I open the search option, you will notice that there are two options only because that's how it's customizing. So customizing only giving you two options here. So we'll talk about customizing later on. And if I go to uh, say sales order, say VA02, so this is the order number for a return order. So let me show you this one first. When I press enter, double click on the line item and then go to schedule lines. Here you can see schedule line category is AR. So if I open the search option, you can notice there's only one option available and nothing else. And one more I show you, if I open a sales order, a standard sales order, say this one, order number 20, and double click on the line item, go to schedule lines. Here you can see CP. If I open the search option, so here system is providing me two option. One is CP, which is a default you will find in when you create the sales orders and CN is the another option that we can manually select. Here you can also notice that when system, here system is showing you two different schedule lines. Basically the first line is the customer expected it. That we, we did discuss this one before, but I'll explain again that the first line is the customer expected delivery date, which is this, but system after checking the stock and availability check system is saying that, okay, I can't confirm on this 11th of Feb, but I can confirm on 18th. So that's why you can see a second line, which that means the second line is the system confirmed quantity. Here you can see the quantity is five, whereas that above quantity is zero because system is saying that on the customer expected delivery date, I can't confirm any quantity. As per my schedule, I can only provide on this date. All right, so let's go back to the slide. So depending on the different document types in sales, different item category will have different schedule and category linked. What that means is, for example, if it's a pre-sales document, that means inquiry, when you create an inquiry, AT is the schedule and category, BN is the one for quotation. When you talk about a standard sales order, CP is the one in the standard sales order. C0 is the one when, when we create a consignment issue without, without availability check. We'll talk about consignment issue later on. There's another order type which is known as outline agreement that we'll learn later on. And you will notice that a um, schedule line category is CV determined by the system. And then when you look at the complaints document, like return and, and different documents, then you will see that D and D0 are the different schedule line category depending on what the document type selected. So these are the different schedule line that you can find in the system. 
Now let's talk about some theory part of the schedule line category. So what is schedule line category? So in a sales document, items are divided into one or more schedule lines. Like we have just seen that either there can be one schedule line and there can be more than one. So we have in the last order, we have seen two schedule lines, but there can be three and four as well, depending on system doing a ATP check and, and considering that when I can deliver what quantity. So system can provide, say for example, in this week I can provide you this much quantity I can deliver and next week I can deliver another 100 quantity like that. So there can be multiple schedule lines within the sales order item. These lines vary as per the date and quantity. You can define multiple control elements for these schedule lines. So these controls will learn later on. Items with schedule lines are only copied into the SAP system. Schedule lines contain important information like delivery dates, mm -hmm. quantity, availability, and inventory, etc. One more thing I want to show you when you go to the Let's open this one. So if I double click on this, say this second one, if I double click on this schedule and category, you can see three different tabs. Again, same tabs will appear whether you look from GUI or whether you look from the Fury app. So first one is the sales, shipping and procurement. So within the sales, you can see the confirmed quantity, delivery date, order quantity, round quantity, required quantity, etc. Shipping tab will show you different dates considered by the system, for example, delivery date, goods issue date, loading date, material availability date, transportation planning date. And we did discuss all this in the previous video, how the system is considering all these dates. Under the procurement tab, you will see, for example, schedule line date, what's up plant and store location and movement type, etc. So let me go back. So these are the details you can find within the schedule line. Now we're going to discuss about naming convention of schedule line category. That means how this looking by looking at the schedule line category name or the, the two numbers, you can find out what that means. So there's a naming convention used by the SAP system. So you can see there are two digits number, whether you look at AT, BN, CPC, 0, C, etc. There are two digit numbers. So basically two alphabets, not numbers. So the first character, the naming convention used for the first character is basically this. So if it's A, that means it's an inquiry. Looking at A, there you can see that this is an inquiry schedule and category. B is for quotation, C is for order, D is for return. And the second character that you can see is, for example, here you can see T, N. So second character, D stands for no inventory management and N stands for no MRP. For example, if you look at the standard one, which is P, P stands for material requirement planning. That means it's relevant for MRP. And when, if you see CN, that means say something ending with N, for example, DN, that means this is without MRP. No MRP is linked to this one. So here you can see DN means schedule N in return without MRP. Same goes for there's another one called V. V means consumption based planning, which is a part of MRP. And there's another one called X, which is no inventory management with goods issue. So this, this is the naming, naming convention used by the SAP system for the two characters of the schedule line category. Now we'll discuss about the functions of schedule line category. What are the different functions performed by the schedule line category? So there are different functions that we can customize within the schedule line category. For example, requirement transfer. That means whether we want to send the requirement from the sales order item to the MRP, then we can ch customize that whether we want to activate the availability check or not for the schedule line item category, schedule line category and other stuff like goods movement. For example, we can mention the goods movement type. We'll discuss later on whether it's a delivery relevance or not. We can mention that. We can do some purchasing related customizing. That means sometimes for like third party sales order processing, 
maybe the company wants to create a direct purchase order or purchase requisition directly from the sales order so in that case we can do some customizing link to the purchasing which we'll discuss in the next video and also we can customize the incompleteness uh, in the within the schedule and category again we'll discuss in the customizing video which will be the next one so as we discuss that the different controlling the items we can do in the customizing for the sales document so let's discuss what are the different controlling that you can find within when you look at the different item different schedule and category for example if you look at the bn which is a quotation schedule and category here in the customizing what we, what we mention is no requirement transfer because obviously when we create a quotation it's not a real sales order it's not a real requirement from the customer in that case we don't want to send a requirement to mrp for a sales for a quotation item no movement types obviously there's no movement because we're not sending the physical goods when we talk about a quotation and obviously not relevant for delivery so these setting we maintain in the bn customizing then if you look at the standard sales order schedule line category which is cp here we need to activate the transfer requirement that means system will send the requirement to mrp and it will further sent to mm guys and pp guys production planning guys movement type we mentioned is 601 that means it's relevant for uh, movement type and also obviously it's relevant for delivery because we're going to deliver the sales order item and when you look at the return which is the schedule line category dn in this case in this case no requirement transfer is needed in the case of return because we're receiving the return from the customer so obviously there's no requirement transfer nothing we need to send to the mrp a movement type is different because the goods are coming back to us not we it's not we sending the goods to the customer and this is relevant for delivery but it will be an inbound delivery and cp will be an outbound delivery so these are the different settings that we can maintain within the customizing of the schedule and category that we'll discuss in the next video so that's all about this video so now we learned about what is schedule line category what are different types of schedule line category and how the naming convention is done for them and also the functions of the different schedule line category so that's all about this and thank you to watch this we'll catch up in the next video